Thank you everyone for uh, joining and good evening. Uh, today my talk is about uh, mammal dispersal and it, it's basically largely heavily understudied. Uh, so I uh, name, name this talk is about un unknown world of mammal seed dispersal. So now at first, uh, so what motivated me about this, about this study is basically four years back I started uh, working on this project and writing uh, started writing this book is called trees of arunachal pradesh while writing uh, this book i started learning about lots of plants and i found that there are lots of plants which are uh, only depends on mammals for their seed dispersal and later uh, some of the research studies also says that more than 25 percent of the plants in northeast are uh, <clears throat> are dispersed by um, are dispersed by mammals and when i uh, started looking in the about the uh, what is known about this thing and i found that severely it it is understudied and and it has even from india the mammal dispersal is severely understudied so i started uh, think uh, to take up this as a as a project so at first i will start with uh, what is seed dispersal so it, it is a mutualistic uh, process where animals get a nutrition uh, in uh, get nutrition in the form of fruits. That's why they uh, they eat it. But what uh, a plants get, it's basically animals after eating the fruits, they disperse the seeds away from the parent plants and to a new places, which helps them to colonize in a, in a far away places. And as both of them are benefited, pl plants and animals, it's called as, uh, it is a mutualistic process. Now seed dispersal is a long-term process. It, uh, it starts with uh, fruit availability or fruiting in an adult tree, and then an animal comes and uptake the fruits or seeds, and it deposited, and those, deposit, uh, those deposited seeds became seedling, and those seedling to sapling, and again, it becomes adult tree, and that's how its, uh, its cycle ends. Now, uh, you can understand it might take from months to years to, uh, to complete this cycle. So it's, it, it is basically, it, this long process is basically a marriage between animal foraging and the plant demography. Uh, so in, in, tropic, in tropics, 60 to 75% of woody plants are depend on animals as a seed disperser. And among the animals, birds and mammals are the main agents. And among them, birds are most well studied. Now, what are the uh, other seed dispersal agents? Is is basically fish, chelonia, and some of the insects like wasps and ants. Wasps and ants also act as seed dispersal. Seed disperser. Now, among mammals, there are variety of the variety of mammals disperse seeds. The small bodied Mammals like squirrels, to larger like elephants, they all, uh, in other way, help in, in, in dispersing seeds. Now, in, in a jungle, lots of fruits uh, uh, show different kind of uh, lots of fruits or different kind of phenotype. So, this phenotype is basically how the how the fruit looks and how they present themselves to to the world. And then some of uh, some of the this, this dispersal agents come and and eat those fruits and seeds. Now mammals, uh, given that they have kind of hand, they can manipulate manipulate fruits and seeds, and 
sometimes lots of mammals are nocturnal so by uh, by nocturnal by nature they generally depends on olfactory or smell to choose uh, choose their fruits like mango you have smell uh, or like sometimes like delenia which is uh, which is othinga in assam which, which is also have the smell now uh, so those are the nocturnal mammals now some of the diurnal mammals like like this bear or or the primates they use their visual cues or the color and the smell both to when they they select uh, select any fruits but typically a mammal fruit they it has described as fleshy it would be big it would be dull colored with odor and it has it, it should have hard covering or protection that that a mammals with their hand can manipulate the fruits and seeds however there is there is set of uh, uh, dispersed fruit which are uh, set of dispersed fruit which are uh, dispersed by both birds and mammals and it is generally uh, uh, characterized by their black in color and their thin their thin in uh, in the skin so now this uh, certainly uh, this this uh, the fruits with this characteristics are generally is dispersed by both birds and mammals so with this background i started looking up some of the question which are what are the roles of different frugivore uh, how effective the mammals as a seed disperser what are the different roles that squirrels play and uh, what are the uh, relation between birds and mammals as a seed disperser are they complementary uh, complementary uh, complementary uh, complementary with each other or they are redundant but uh, so uh, this is my uh, study site which is pocket tiger reserve uh, and i have selected more than 30 species of plants which are generally uh, from the um, prior knowledge or from the literature we thought that it would have been dispersed by dispersed by mammals so on that knowledge we have selected around 30 species that we will look into this study now um, i want to recall this uh, this cycle again because uh, in the latter part of my talk i will go through this cycle uh, and um, and that's how i do i do my field work and i will end up to the stage which is seedling distribution because you know after that it takes months to years to complete this cycle so for logistical reason you cannot uh, while studying this it's very difficult to uh, totally end this cycle so that's why i i decided to stop at the seedling distribution and later stage uh, stage of my uh, of my talk i will uh, uh, my talk format would be on the basis of these stages so now the first stage is fruit and seed removal and for this stage uh, i have, i put generally camera traps and uh, camera traps for nocturnal seed disperser or nocturnal of uh, the mammals or any other animals who come to visit the fruits so i generally put fruits and seeds in front of the camera trap down below the trees to check what are the mammals are coming or what are the animals are coming to handling those fruit and seeds and uh, also what i uh, for diurnal i also go and sit below uh, sit around uh, around the fruiting trees for 6 hour to check what are the uh, what are the diurnal mammals are coming through binocular and mammals and all the animals are coming to eat to consume the fruits and seeds and how they are handling those seeds so now uh, so one of my question as i told that what are the different role of frugivores now as i as i started my talk as a seed disperser someone some people might wondering what is uh, what are the different role can have other than seed disperser so at this stage when one animal comes and handling fruit and seeds they uh, can take whole fruits inside inside uh, inside their like uh, whole fruit. they can uptake whole seeds whole fruits so then we would generally call them as a seed disperser sometimes they come only to eat seeds and they destroy this on the process they uh, destroy those seeds so then we call it seed predator and sometimes some of the mammals will come and eat only the pulp and leave the seeds down so now when the mammals does this then we generally tend to uh, assign them as a pulp eater now it has 
all these uh, mammals will, uh, with all those different roles has significance in the in the plant demography of uh, in a forest. Now the next I will from the next I will uh, share some videos from my camera trap and and different videos of how fruit and seed handled by different mammals and also from uh, from the fruit tree watch that I have found some interesting fruit and seed handling behavior. So now here there is seaweed uh, seaweed which are uh, on gynocardia odorata there is chalmugra fruit and how they uh, generally uptake the seeds with the pulp. And here is the video. So basically, you can see uh, that they are. Uh, so I put this camera trap at the at the canopy, where to setting up with the, some of the fruits in the focus of of the of the camera, and I, I I try to see that what are the mammals are coming and eating, and you can see that uh, the this. So basically, what I have found is this seeds will come and open those fruits and try to have uh, at the pulp with the seeds, and they will. Uh, ingest whole whole the uh, whole the pulp and with the seeds. Now uh, here the goat is consuming consuming uh, Delenia indica, which is in Assamese, which is called Autenga, and how they are consuming it. Uh, with the sound, we have found that. Uh, they are generally cracking, cracking whole, uh, whole delinea in there. It's a big fruit which is around 20 centimeter in diameter, and that's that's how they uptake the seeds. And most probably they disperse. Some of the papers have suggested they disperse delinea indica. Now the hair elephant is uh, consuming spondius, which is which, uh, in Assamese which is called as amuratenga, and see how they are consuming those those fruits. So here is basically there are two elephants and I, I think there's a group and uh, they generally love this fruit and I have found like I put like 30 fruits in front of this camera trap and they came and ate everything every of this fruit. Here uh, there's a rhesus macaque which is consuming a uh, consuming a fruit called actinodaphne and just look at how they're uh, putting putting the fruits in their in their mouth and look at the, their cheek pouch and and this is this is a juvenile one. This is not even the adult. Now please see the chick pouch. Now a macaque is generally put like uh, fruit, lots of fruits in their chick pouch, and then they will go uh, like from this parent tree, they will go around uh, around 50, 60 meter, and or, or more than that, and they will sit in a in a uh, in a place where they will eat all those fruits, and uh, and they will disperse or they will throw those seeds below uh, below where they are resting, and that's how they disperse seeds. Uh, so here is a is a giant squirrel, which is eating Bell's media Assamica fruit. Please uh, notice how they are uh, handling.
So here it's, it's basically what they're doing is uh, you see those black fruits and they're eating eating their pulp. Now we uh, generally we associate the squirrels as as a seed eater, but what what I I started extensively researching on on the tree squirrel and what it does and what I have found is they are more of a pulp eater than a seed eater. The generally uh, it seeds for for a couple of for some of the plants it's true, but there uh, for most species they they eat the pulp and throw the seeds down. Now sometimes like here they they, they will end up throwing the seeds down of the parent tree, but sometimes they go. Uh, far around four or five meters also, and then they they will eat the pulp and throw the seeds. So you can tell the uh, do short dispersal, uh, short distance seed dispersal, but they are more of a pulp eater and and putting the seeds uh, below the tree of the parent parent plants. What I have found. Here's pa pa pala squirrel, which is on magnolia hodgsoni tree, and it is try to open a unopened fruits. Now see the the red one at the at the side, and that's the seeds when it, when it opens. But it's time to open open the seeds because they love the seeds. So yeah, so uh, this is another kind of behavior that I found. That uh, so for these seeds, it is interesting that they go for the seeds, not not for the aril, but for some of the plants, they eat the aril. So aril is basically the red thing you found in a, you are finding uh, the red coloration and finding the cover of the seeds. So it's, it's one of the interesting thing that I uh, they found in in uh, while doing this study. Now here's, uh, here's wild boar which generally goes directly for the seeds. You see, they are targeting the seeds and eating the fruit, and sometimes they eat whole fruits also and crushing everything in, in their mouth, and which is basically destroying the seeds. And they are mainly known as a seed predator, but yeah, at the end I will discuss about them. So here is a porcupine family, which also a seed predator, as we know, and eating the base media seeds below the tree. Yeah. So in this in this video footage, for I have put like uh, 20 seeds, and for on the course of two hours, they are eating. They have finished all the seeds uh, at one go, and they love these species seeds. Here's a bat. I also put some camera traps at the top, and I found a bat also disperse the Gynocardia odorata seeds, and uh, just uh, observe the how they are carrying the seeds. So they are, uh, you, you see the hanging seeds on their, from their mouth. So that's that's how the bat disperse seeds uh, for some of the plants. Here there's a rodents or rats or mouse, uh, which is moody rodents, and they are generally removing removing fruits. And I have found that they are removing fruits and seeds both for different kind of species. Now here, I'll just so. Is generally removing the seeds, and also I have found that they also uh, see uh, fruits. Uh, also, I found that they uh, remove the seeds also for some of the plants. Now, um, I have uh, given you some idea of how a mammal, how some of the mammals uh, handle fruits and seeds, and then the next stage of a uh, of a seed dispersal is seed deposition. Now, how they do they deposit seeds? So it's basically uh, for civets and beer, uh, they deposit seeds on the in the form of scat. So on the ungulates, like uh, summer deer, barking deer, they regurgitate, regurgitate the seed. It's basically they eat all the pulp and then they uh, like throw down the seeds after eating the pulp. Uh, some uh, some of the ungulates, bobeeds and porcupine, uh, they sometimes disperse seeds by dropping. Uh, by the throw they're dropping 
elephant also dispersates through their tongue so maca uh, do the spat which is basically the put fruits in their in the cheek pouch and then it's spat uh, after going after some distance and they also sometimes disperse seeds with the poop squirrel handle seeds differently and sometimes you will find in the jungle the bat uh, some fruits are falling down in a in a, uh, in a place like 20, 25 30 fruits which will have a some kind of pulp around their seeds and uh, that that is sometimes uh, that is generally that's how bat also does it when they they, they are uh, dispersing single seeded fruit so that's the so it's basically this uh, that's also uh, mm, so sometimes i i go on a trail in in a field and then i look for all this thing and then then i i observe this and i generally uh, try to figure out what are the number of seeds are there what are the different species of seeds are there and i also note, note down their microhabitat level because sometimes those matters for their germination and that's how you generally uh, tell that how uh, effective those mammals as a, as a seed disperser so this is um, um, i'll show some photos and and one video of how they handle seeds and this is seed seed cat that's how it look like this is the bear cat i have only found one species that bear is dispersing so this is the barking bear regurgitation pile they generally the regurgitation pile in one place you will find there are very low number of seeds but uh, not below below the parent tree you will find away from the parent tree that's when you will be sure sometimes you will find two type two or three type of seeds in in front uh, in one place that's also possible this is summer where you will find lots of seeds in one place and i have found as many as five different uh, seeds in in one seed pile in, in one place so that's pretty cool here the squirrel handle as i said before squirrel handle seeds differently now uh, you uh, just uh, notice the th uh, the left most photo so the pinkish color fruits are generally the fruit uh, the bells media uh, sorry seeds they are regurgitated by uh, hornbills but other than pinkish color seeds they are dropped by uh, malayan giant squirrel and you see their bite mark so that's how i generally mm, mm, figure out that what is their uh, agent that is causing this i generally go and uh, observe their bite marks they sometimes uh, eat the pulp and the seeds both just like this pyrin area you can see the seeds are also falling in and the fruits are also and for magnolia sometimes squirrels goes only for the seeds and they leave the aril uh, and they leave the aril they doesn't eat the aril at all here uh, sorry for the very poor photos but you see that the, uh, these are the bat handle seeds that i have found you see there are seeds but there are lots of pulp around around it and you will find like 30 40 seeds in in one place now what are the other uh, agent can disperse this or can like remove the fruits like seeds or fruits like this is kind of Uh, uh rodents or or squirrels but squirrel never do it in those huge number so that's why uh so by process of elimination and asking people they are also uh, uh they also agreed to it that this is bad dispersed fruits this was seeds so maca sometimes they eat uh, and they disperse smaller uh, seeds through their poop here there is the ficus rupacea seeds you will find in in maca poop and is uh, in a in a lots of numbers or sometimes they disperse seeds like this so just uh mm, observe this uh, this video that how they disperse seeds in in one place you see they yeah here and then they will eat this fruits again like this but it's a long video so that's how they they disperse they are disperse seeds by eating in 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 a place where they are resting and then whatever they are putting in the chick pouch they will take one by one and they will throw after eating the pulp 
you will also find uh, that in 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 one place four five seeds uh, are there and you will uh, get to know that these are the muri protein or some squirrel but uh, as i am doing some of the um, uh, yeast study uh, camera trap so you will know that for which species squirrel are visiting and for which species the rodents are visiting so this this is a kind of cardia odorata but rodents generally visit these fruits and i have seen them uh, removing so this is you can say that this is uh, rodent handle seeds wild boar also sometime uh, dispersives they are mainly seed predator but some smaller seeds like ficus here you can see those those white dots in their in the dung is generally seeds is seeds and i have found uh, they uh, when i try to germinate in our nursery and they have germinated so there this is pretty cool finding that they can also disperse some of the seeds now this is the porcupine uh, droppings you can see this brown brown threads uh, in in their dropping and this is basically canarium uh, canarium seeds they eat all the and they chew all the seeds and and from their droppings you find this kind of thing now there is a uh, old goat dung so sometimes you also find seeds in the in their dungs and lots of uh, people which is who are uh, frontline staff in forest department they have they have told me that they have found they have seen germination from the cow uh, scat also goat dung also so now after the deposition what i uh, this is the second uh, this is the third stage what i do is basically for some of the fruit uh, some of the seeds i leave them in the jungle and i tag them and then in every 6 days 7 days i go there and i check what are their seed fate now seed fate is basically sometimes some uh, uh, some seed eating lord seed predator or seed uh, eating insect or fungi fungus or uh, some of the mammals will come and eat those seeds or some of the rodents will come and remove those seeds so that case i i call them predation and but i generally uh, uh, monitor them for more than 2 months and sometimes you find that they are also germinating in the same place just to check that if those seeds are germinating they are not because when you know uh, when you want to know that what is the post dispersal seed fate of of those uh, of those mammal poops or yeah that's how you get to know that how effective they are as a seed disperser so here are some of the photos of you see this is the insect predation you see from the scat uh, so uh, sometimes what happen some of the insects like beetles they come and make a hole in the seeds you will find those both the photos you will find a hole find some holes in the seeds and then they lay eggs inside and with their uh, what happens is with their uh, caterpillar will eat all the endosperm inside and then they come out so that's that's their uh, the, their process so that's how some of the insect uh, predate those seeds sometimes i find fungus also predate those seeds like this you find those uh, kind of outgrowth white is outgrowth which is generally a fungus and then after some time you will find that the seeds are gone back and here some mammals as at the left is the porcupine one and the right is the rodent one uh, is generally the squirrels or and the uh, the muri rodents and they go and this is canarium uh, they try to eat which is there inside their seed coat and uh, they love it basically i have found lots below the trees and also from the seed piles i have also found germination here is the germination uh, from civet scat this is the bridelia and then that is a lia so it's uh, i well, while i was monitoring those see uh, those cats and and see why they found this germination at the end is the uh, some of the barking deer and some bird uh, regurgitation pile germination three species i found this germination but germination rate is is pretty low but i have to, again i if i uh do this for months like 3 4 months then i might find actual but for the logistical reason i could do only for 2 months so the preliminary understanding uh while there are lots of uh, these mammals in a, in a in a forest so uh in the preliminary understanding that i have that civet most disperse uh through uh, most 
the most number of species that they, they have dispersed, which is 16. And at the last, the murid rodents are created most number of seeds. While you see that porcupine and oil bore also created lots of seeds. Now, why is the seed predation like uh, even uh, lots of uh, before that? So why do you know that? Uh, why do you want to know that seed predation is important? So sometimes people has uh, uh, through their study they have seen that the seed predator uh, generally determine the distribution of adult plants in in, in a landscape. And they also help in, uh, you know, increasing the plant diversity or their coexistence. So they are as important as seed dispersal. Uh, so yeah, and also very interesting is porcupine also can act as a pulp eater. Now for two species, I have found that they are not going for the seeds. They are, for one species, they are eating only only the aril, which is the seed coat. And for one species, they are eating only the uh, only the fruit pulp which is uh, spondius. So that's also interesting. So it's not always one species will act as a seed predator or seed disperser. It's, it's, quite, it's quite fluent in their behavior or in their role. Now, some of the ungulates also act as a seed predator. Uh, what I have found is that for two species, they're acting as a seed predator uh, among the 24 species that I have still have studied. So now the squirrels, uh, so I started to look at the squirrels in a in a more details is because what I have found in the tropical literature or previous knowledge that they are generally uh, observed or uh, they are generally noted in those papers or in those books as a seed eater. Now, while I am finding in, in, in my study sites that they're eating seeds for some species, which is a post dispersal seed predator, but they are mainly a pulp eater. You see, three of those three squirrels, they are uh, like they are eating pulp or pulp of uh, like seven, eight species. Now they are also a very important pre-dispersal seed predator, which is already has been uh, which is already has been noted or which already has been studied. Now, what do you mean by uh, this pre-dispersal, post-dispersal, and the seed dispersal? So pre-dispersal seed predator is basically when they eat the uh, raw fruits, which is not ripe. Now you see the the rightmost of the fruit, fruit photo. So that's a raw fruit they are eating, and they are uh, throwing down. Now, what do you mean by the post dispersal seed predator? You see at the leftmost photo where they are only eating the fruits, eating the seeds after uh, eating the after uh, after after the like from the mature fruit, not the immature fruit. Uh, fruit. So they are only going for the seeds. And what is the pulp eater? So uh, in the middle photo, this fruit is look like uh, generally a, uh, a dark color, dark blue color, but they are eating only the pulp. So that's why it's became, after that it's, it's, it's became white. So they are eating only the, only the pulp and they're throwing the seeds down. So that's how they uh, act as all three roles and they're pr pretty important in the landscape from the larger scheme and for the plant demography. Now, uh, as I said before, the civet dispersed 16 species. These are the three species they have, uh, they have dispersed. I just thought of putting some of the slides to tell you what are the dis uh, dispersed species of the, uh, of the mammal legend, seed dispersal agent. Summer are barking deer has dispersed uh, 10 species and some of the example of these, these, these three. And again, you see that both of uh, like here, the only one red red color or that also so the red color is the uh, before stage of the ripe so in ripe they also act as uh, they also colored it's the black here uh, the antidesma but all are dull colored not very bright colored uh, fruits and they i have found they have uh, the summer or bucking they are also created two of the species these two macaque i have found this for six species uh, so these three are, are, are the example and which, uh, yeah, and they are putting all those seeds in, in the chick pouch that I have uh, told you before. Elephant dispersed this, I found dispersed these two species, which is one is Delenia, one is Spondius, and I think I'm sure there are lots of people eat also these two species. One is in Assamese, uh, one is called Amura Tenga, and one is Dao Tenga. And 
it's in in culinary as Assamese as culinary history they have a very long uh, history in the Assamese as culinary process and yeah thank you this is it's all about the mammals in this person I left them. Yeah. Ask. We were looking at germination, right? So anytime a seed is dispersed, is it completely intact or is there some dimension or to the probability of germination takes time? Yeah, so it depends on uh, basically uh, it depends on which who uh, what agent is handling about the intact seeds. Now when a uh, what I have found from my finding is when a um, elephant, when an elephant or a barking deer, somber or uh, or civet, they are putting, uh, they are uh, they are dispersing seeds. They are quite intact. But when a squirrel, uh, squirrel is handling seeds, so sometimes what it does, uh, you saw saw the video that they are putting, uh, they are eating on the pulp. So in that process, they know, mm -hmm. their no comes. Now I am just started a experiment in our nursery to check that if the knowing has an effect in the germination or not. Then we can say that they are also a good germinate, good seed dispersal or not. I just started it. Uh, I have done the same with the, the porcupines. Sometimes I have told you the porcupines are eating only the, uh, only the aerials. Sometimes I have found that they are also knowing and I have already done this experiment and I have found that uh, they are pretty similar with not knowing seeds. Yeah, kind of that. Uh, but the sample size is very low because I could find there are only four or five seeds with the knowing. Whatever I tried, but yeah, that's uh, like it's kind of 100% they have germinated. Mm, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, that's the thing. So it depends on which agent is uh, dispersing seeds and where you are finding. But sometimes after these agents are dispersing seeds, uh, lots of this uh, lots of this seed predator they will come and and they will eat the seeds on the spot. Then you will find lots of these broken seeds around. But other than that, but then you will get to know that those seed predator has came, not the uh, not the agent seed dispersal agent has done. But yeah, so it's basically if you if you walking along along the trail in and. Uh, you know that this is the mammals are there, so you have to do the process of eliminating uh, what I do. That then you get to know that which agent has, has done this and what can be possible. Yeah. Anyone has seen? Yes. Yes, it's possible. Uh, so that's why elephants are one of the main, most important seed dispersal, which is which has been thoroughly studied around the world. And because their home range is more, they go and uh, disperse in different places. However, it doesn't uh, tells you that they are dis uh, they are putting basically where they are uh, uh, put uh, where they are putting dung, right? Or where their uh, dung is there. But that doesn't, if the dung is in new places, that doesn't tell you that they will germinate. So that's why the uh, A of importance of microhabitat comes. If it is in the shade, it depends on different species, they, they are shade tolerant, then they will germinate. If it is on the, on not in the shade, in open in the sun, some species might not germinate as much as they will germinate at shade. So those kind of things matter. So that's why I am going to the post dispersal phase and see that how effective they are. So that's that's the where the effectiveness comes. That so because lots of studies they have done 
what they have done they have done, end up stop at the down stage they didn't go after so that's i picked up and i thought that i will go what is happening after the dispersal phase also because that is also pretty important and what they are doing and different dance might have different effect civet scat might have different some of the insect might come because of their civet there is some kind of uh, snail is there and some of the dung so some of the dung beetle also might come because of of the elephant so it all depends on which dung and what the microhabitat is and maybe what are the agent is yeah that's what i am looking at anyone has even online people Wrap up. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I hope it makes yeah. you interested more about mammals. We should take the time. <laughs> yeah, sure. Come to come to Pakhi. I'll I'll take. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Well, uh, Yes. So what? Sorry. Uh, so I I didn't go into the technical details. So what I am studying is which is called endo uh, endozukur. So endozukur is basically inside and digestive system and then putting it. But and so, so lots of uh, those uh, barking deer, sambar, even with the I think uh, in uh, with the elephant and lots of which is far in their body. So the lots of those herbs, herbaceous species, they get stuck in their in their far or uh, in their hair basically, and then they go long long distance. Even so, the best example is whenever you are going in a jungle. you see lots of seeds will stuck in your pant is because they are uh, evolved in a way that they will stuck in your pant or on the far or on the hair whatever they will find so yeah that's that's that's, that's a different kind of whole different kind of field that people works in and yeah that's the, the that's a uh, thing that had not been explored in india at all yeah i have not found single paper till now Which? Uh, I remember you were talking about farmers. Uh, you know, so they would say that uh, there are three varieties of uh, male things in uh, yellow, and there's some red, and there's some dark black. And then some uh, makers they will have all three colors. So they say because you know they have like flowers from all these different uh, plants, which plants are coming from. So it's like you know, I think like bees can do it, and I think mammals can also help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely and that's a uh, that's a different field people in europe are working like gaur like those bisons and with the huge bisons you you find in in uh, what is called in temperate region in in europe uh, they are very high in the grassland they are very uh, like very important for their culture and all so those are very important uh, seed dispersers for those herbaceous species which will stuck in your uh, in your hair and all yeah they does it a lot and lots of grasses does it so that's why uh, the grassland their dispersal happens like this even oh now i remember the, even in the grassland and the temperate region in india they also lots of yak and all they also increase in their they they call it seed bank because you can't measure like <laughs> uh, like catching one yak and you know you can't measure it but you just correlate with the seed bank of of that region so yeah that does it now i remember yeah 
saya. Oke, okay. I think we should wrap up. Thank you. Now I am allowed to leave the call. No? Yeah. <laughs>